was going to just come out cold reading the uh, extremely well edited piece of erotica that I wrote in the past 30 minutes. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's your show, Paige. So do you want to invite the guest first or or just kind of have them wait in the wings while we while we go through this paragraph by paragraph? I would love to have someone to go through this with me. So let's uh, invite out our guest, uh, Sarah. Yeah, it feels like the peak of game shows back when all of the cast members were like small time celebrities who made really inappropriate jokes about all the guests. Ooh. Yeah. And is that not what you are? <sighs> we'll find out. <laughs> I mean, we can put you on the spot right away. We can shove the erotica. What's your most I really resent being asked to come on uh, so quickly just to be a buffer between Paige and the erotica. <laughs> I, I mean, we can get Paige out of the mix completely. <laughs> But I resent it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I can accept that. Yeah, I I'm would happy do the same. you're here. Yeah, I'm happy you're here. <laughs> I I believe it was uh, Machiavelli who said it is better to be resented uh, and respected rather than loved. Or I'm pretty like sure that. that was Marilyn Monroe. I mean, wasn't Machiavelli just the Marilyn Monroe of his day? Upskirts all day, every day. Yeah. Who is that? So my my pitch was going to be that we could actually just remove Paige entirely for a minute, so that there's there's no buffer at all. Just sort of. We both need the buffer. To use the polite yeah. term, we would just we would just be raw dogging this story. Right. No, I mean, I'm happy to to duck out, dog, dog raw dog out. I don't know. No, I'm, let's get this. You're happy to raw gaga. Would you like to elaborate on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You'll find out later when we start role playing. Okay. Kelly, lay it all on the floor and stomp on it like grapes. That was I, exactly what my plan was, word for word. So this story is, uh, you know, it's called a little piece of fan fiction because I'm a fan of Josh's work and this is really his world. So... This piece oh. of erotica stars what I would call the unwitting hero of our current campaign. <laughs> um, the character I play, Smegma Glans, uh, which for, for new viewers just joining us is uh, it's an Atlant traditional Atlantean name, meaning calm, blessed one. Mm. Should I do a voice for it or just my voice? I think you have to uh, do a voice for it. The voice, yeah. Yeah. What's what's like an erotic audiobook voice, sort of like a like a husky, oh, like a David Attenborough. Oh. David Attenborough. Does he nice. read a lot of erotic audiobooks? I mean, you have to look really hard to find them, but they're out there. Ooh. Um, I was thinking your character voice. Yeah, you know what? Oh, that's such a it's such an unsexy voice, though. It's very. What? I'm just gonna. Don't I'm. I'm gonna go. Say that about your voice that you made for Smegma Glance. He's a pretty awful character, um, e but uh, no I'm, gonna, I'm just going to draft completely <laughs> off the board here, and I'm going to go with sort of a weird, like, mid-Atlantic or transatlantic thing. Trans and Smegma glands leaned laconically over the side of the boat. He had a casual look about him, a sort of effortless veneer that he spent years honing. The captain was barking at him over his shoulder. Something about maritime safety. His boat, his rules. It was at least the fourth or fifth time Smegma had heard this lecture and was taking in none of it. It was the sea that called to him, or rather, it was the promise of what was rumored to lurk just below the surface of the waves. In contrast to the gruff, disheveled, almost cartoonishly stereotypical sea captain, Smegma stood out starkly. He was handsome, yes, almost generically so, sort of an Atlantean Josh Hartnett, if you will. Or an Atlantean Andrew Garfield for you whippersnappers out there. Andrew Gar Andrew But it Garfield. was his style that really sold his look. He was as normcore as they came, always wearing the trendiest mainstream streetwear. Diesel jeans, possibly H&M shirts. Definitely a bunch of recognizable brands that I would know if I had been in a mall in the past decade. 
Smegma chose his moment carefully. He had watched the old man's patterns all day, rigging masts, battening hatches, swabbing decks. He knew exactly when the crusty mariner would be below decks and hurriedly vaulted himself overboard before he could second-guess himself or lose his nerve. He hoped to Poseidon this was indeed the right place. Is he and still wearing jeans and a button-up? Ooh, yeah, ouch. Oh, the character? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm also doing that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, Smegma yeah. Glands does not wear utilitarian clothing for anything. Excellent. He hoped to Poseidon this was indeed the right place, and to his relief, as soon as he had passed the point of no return over the railing, he began to hear his song. We began Almost to as chafing. if by instinct, he began swimming the moment he hit the water. He didn't know where he was going, but he felt himself pulled there. Before he knew it, he sat on a sandbar before the siren calling to him. She was more beautiful than he even imagined. Even the most deranged, feet-focused Reddit subreddits could not compare to what he now saw, planted in the sand, holding up the kind of legs a 50s pinup could only dream of. And the scales, oh, the scales from waist to head, the absolute platonic form of the top half of a fish. He stepped forward boldly, but still gently. He took in her nude form, noting the only scrap of coverage hiding any part of her body. The smallest, tiniest tuft of seaweed, just large enough to cover the naughtiest bits down below. His eyes darted from it to her own fish eyes, back to the kelp. He cleared his throat to offer his best line. <clears throat> you know, I'm on the seaweed diet. That's it. That's the whole. Thank God. You'll have to. Uh, you'll have to pay for the rest of the story. Uh, that's yeah, that's I bonus content. There was a does, lot of preamble there. Yeah. Does I was trying fish, to. Yeah. Go ahead. Does it hey. have pubes? Do does she have pubes? Um. Does she shave? What would she use to shave? It's hard to say because it was under the seaweed. You know, it's sort of like that. But how small was the, that's? How yeah. small was the seaweed that it was still covering it's like up? Big old seaweed bush. Yeah. And then a bush under that. Yeah. 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 Too, well, too I mean, the text says big too enough to cover curious. the naughtiest bits. So I don't know if we need to go through the bits to determine exactly are, which ooh. ones are the naughtiest. Are her pubes tangled up? Are those the knots? Oh. It's a good question. I mean, are these, are these I can all work in as notes for the next draft. I've right, also got right. a quick question about the fish eyes. Like, so she's mm. top half is halibut. The eyes are on the same side. So you can look into the both of them at the same fish. time. Yeah. That does like, you work. know, regular fish has got much like these headphones, right? Oh, yeah. It's good visual. Eye on the one each side of the face. Maybe he's, he's, so he gets to both of them. Maybe. Is, we need, is we need more preamble. Only... You got to add to it now. Yeah. I know too much about the captain, not enough about this siren. Yeah. Well, as I was about to write it, Paige was saying, like, you know, I don't want a whole bunch of sexual scenes and i was like or That's... that was what i was getting from it and i was like well maybe we can kind of just maybe we can just tease that part you know it's felt less like a tease and more like a threat that would be my mm. um my final comment <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right i'll take that note i'm not gonna do anything with it but i'll definitely take it thank you yeah perfect good yeah so is is a halibut like my only option for a fish that you can look at both eyes at once? There are other flatfish. Ooh, it could be like a barrel. Uh, there's a fish called a barrel-eyed something where the eyes are on top of its head. Mm. So huh. she could have that for the top half. And then if she's sitting like torso sitting up. And so like the eyeballs would both be like pointed directly out. But when she's swimming, oh, I guess they'd be at the back of their head. Yeah. So you'd have to turn around. And then she'd be able to see at the back of their head. Yeah. Mm. Well, maybe, maybe she's doing that like comic book, like female comic book character pose with like, you know, they bend the spine at the impossible angle. Oh, yeah. So you can like oh, okay. see the face, but Ooh. also the ass. What if but like it's... a hagfish? So almost eel like. <laughs> happening here? <laughs> Something is happening. I feel like that's exactly how I picture Smegma Glands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty generic. Um, <laughs> is there a wiki how article for how to please your like half fish lover if there isn't there should be we can work on it yeah I guess yeah start it now and finish it later 
Yeah, we could co-create it right now. We could throw out the entire concept of interview and just start writing this manual. Can you right. go, like, make your own WikiHow pages? Is there a WikiHow to make, to yes. teach you how to make a WikiHow? Oh, there has to be. It's Wikiception. <laughs> see, if I had my hands on the wheel, I would try to drag these windows around to see what else we can reveal from this picture, but I don't. I mean, when you drag the pictures around, they just end up switching i don't right. know if it's still the same like it doesn't Ooh, you get a little glimpse though you get a real mm. real quick glimpse we could like yeah we just need to shuffle forth. them really fast yeah a bit of a tease again yeah now i'm disoriented I'm in the opposite corner there we Boop. go I'm back where i belong mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh what is <laughs> well well i see scales yeah i see lips oh well, I also see the smaller version kind of, of it, since it's on the like corner of my screen here. I can see what it is in the small version. It looks very much just like a goldfish on top of a uh, on top of a dude. I hope it's kind of cool. I hope yeah. you're having a nice night. Yeah, Hard well, to no. Say. WikiHow's policies are are very like tightly regimented in terms of the like every activity in a WikiHow image needs to be like canonically yeah. consensual. Yeah. You have to write it into the metadata, like the the backstory of why it happened, even if they're just like building a shelf. Like For every WikiHow article, there's a separate related article, WikiHow to get consent to start this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why they'll, and that's why they'll never sell for billions. They're just, they're, right. they're shooting that's themselves right. in the foot. If anything, I think that would be good because it's multiple products for, it's a better structure than Twitter, to be honest. Eh. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm so glad we, we miss have, her. I, we miss her. I'm so glad we <laughs> oh, have our audiences like... to fill in the jokes that we can't. Mm -hmm. In the South, like in the American South, people will do something called, I think it's noodling, is when they use their hand to like catch catfish. And then it does look like they're just sort of fisting a catfish's mouth. Like when they do the tickling thing? I don't think they. I think they just hold bait in their hand. They put them down like, down in the like, water, and a catfish like, slurps onto their hand. That actually I've just like, it. oh yeah, it's like, just like you can look fish up, up to here, fish up yeah, to here, like all the way, fish up to, depending on the size of the catfish. Wow, I didn't yeah, know like you're not going on the other side. How much foreplay you go catfish, through right? ahead of time? Mm. Oh, right, important. That's what the tickling is. Maybe like yeah, well, I, maybe. Maybe this depends on how like generous of a fisherman you are, Will, or you know, fisher person, fisher. You can you can be any kind of fisher, honestly. There's a wiki how for all of it. Yeah. So this oh, actually no. segues beautifully into the first question I had written down for you, which is. It should. Uh, <laughs> well, then we'll jump to the second question, which is, uh, <laughs> which fish which fish is the most erotic? <laughs> which. Fist. Honestly, Fish. wow, that's a big question, though. What do you like? Part of it is like looking at taxonomy. Like, what do you consider a fish? Right, because obviously mammals aren't fish. But are like, is a cephalopod a fish? Because a cuttlefish oh. is the most erotic animal. They love to cuddle. They're all about the foreplay. But are they a fish? See, I, I was hoping name, you were though. here to tell us what a fish is because I'm like... not a marine biologist. I feel like I'm less popular of one. conception. Are, are there are there a few maybe just so we have everything clear? Are there a few other jobs you want to like firmly establish that you're not? Oh, I am not a garbage collector, but I mm -hmm. wish I were. That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am not. I do not work in sewage plant processing, but I did apply for an interview for a job at one once. But that's hmm. it. Anything else is up in the air. I could do it. See, it's interesting you say you're not a garbage collector because you could have self set yourself up for an incredible joke of like, you know, not counting my exes. Hey, no, I don't collect them. I have to work very hard to get them to stop contacting me. Oh. Do you want to run us through the wiki how for that? That would be a good one. Yeah. We'll work on that. Safety tips, got one? Oh, whenever they email you, tell them under no circumstances to ever contact you again, and then you've got yourself at least like three years before they forget all about that email you anyways. 
I mean, three years is as long as an email lasts, right? Like you have to, you have to re-email every three years anyway for just to, just to check. Yeah, you know, you never know. It's been about ten years since we last saw each other. Maybe. Eh? Okay, so I feel like we've kind of lost the thread there. I, I'm still not certain what a eels. Fish is. Eels are probably the most sexual and sexy, like classical fish. Okay. Classical yeah. fish. Like, are there are there new fish like Pokemon? Like, it's just like a new set of fish. Well, it's less like like you have the classical fish, like just a prototypical fish. That's going to be honestly, I think an eel counts as much as other people might argue about that. We also don't know where they fuck. They're very shy. I've heard that, and that's yeah. I think we're working on it. Science is getting there. Trying to put cameras in eel dens. Doing our Setting best. Up, yeah, pumping in a bunch of like soft beats for them. See yep. if they can set the mood just right. <laughs> would like would you say they're shy or prudish or have you looked at an eel? You know I don't think they're prudish. I I meant to look at an eel. It was like number one on my task list of preparing for you being on the show. And like again, it's the ADD thing. I go to look at an eel and the next thing I know I'm thinking, Oh, I need to, you know, jokingly change Josh's name on Discord. And then I'm trying to remember how to spell the name of these, like, you know, right wing political chuds in Alberta. And then I'm like hate reading the Twitter profile. And, you know, then I'm posting it on a different Discord server and I've completely forgotten about the eels. It's tragic. I think that's also what happens every time scientists try to figure out where eels fuck, to be fair. Because <laughs> where I was going with the question is I'm trying to think, like, for some reason I'm picturing, you know, that whole like Mormon sheet thing? Is oh it yeah, Mormons? uh, it's I don't know if that ever actually was a thing, but the the rumor is definitely about Mormons. But like with eels, it would just be one hole, and the entire eel would still be going through the hole. Wait, wait, wait! What kind of do we know? What kind of genitals they have? Functional what kind? Ones? Yeah, well, because like, you know, you've got your you got your famous your classic weird dick animals. You got ducks. Right. You got cats. Sure. Uh you got the the bed bugs that have the weird like uh weaponized hypodermic stab dicks. Oh, that's really common in a lot of uh fish. Like ovipositors? So like yeah. the lady has it or the female parts fish has a No, it's dick. usually the the sperm oh. like and then with some bed bugs and then with some fish, it's not even like into a cloaca or like any kind of like hole. It's just like well, approximately where you're like where the eggs are gonna be. I'm just gonna stab through your flesh a little bit and then pump a bunch of sperm in there. Right. Here's this for later. You're welcome. That's right. Yeah. 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 Like in the bed bug one, they like I believe they like crack open the chest entirely. It's like it's what? super brutal. Yeah. I think it's is it fatal? No, it can't be. That doesn't work. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't brush masculinity. up on bed bugs either, to be honest. No, I don't. I'm sure eels just have like something like a cloaca. Well, yeah, that was that was the next example I was thinking of. Like, do eels just have a cloaca? Like, like would they be close to what snakes have? Because like, I just, oh, it's just like, like do that whole deal. Yeah. Because I'm thinking if you're if you're in, like you got two animals, they have right. cloacas. Are they the same kind of animal. Okay, two animals. I'm both thinking of have two cloaca? eels. I'm no, just no, no. so. A, Cloaca is like where eggs come out and also poop and also pee. Yeah. It's so everything so, hole. Yeah, it's the everything hole, but it is mostly for like female animals. So I thought species uh, with cloacas is just like both of their biological sexes, they have cloacas, they do the cloacal kiss, and everything just interacts. Oh, that could be. I'm not a biologist. I have heard well, of we're becoming that term one for some reason minute. before. Yeah. Cloacal kiss sounds like sounds so romantic. Yeah. Oh, oh, I think I say like a metal band name. No, not quite. They're like hair metal. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure that's what birds slash dinosaurs do. I learned it from reading dinosaur comics, so that, that has to be why. I just like imagine if you like, I don't know, like humans are always told like, oh, like you can't get pregnant from like dry humping or heavy petting or whatever. And like you're some <laughs> sort of like bird who's like managed to figure out human speech and go to human sex ed. And you're like, oh, this is fine. I can totally like bump cloacas and we're not, not gonna, gonna get we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna get pregnant we're just scissoring here and then next thing you know whoops. yeah i imagine like just bumping cloacas like 
you know, often it's like a right. fist bump. Yeah. Yeah, I, I sort of imagine that as the the equivalent it's like a congratulatory of congratulatory. What's sort that of actual kiss? Practice. It's their version of soaking, right? You know, soaking. No. Yeah. Explain. Well, that's if I was thing. five years old, please explain soaking. Oh, if we were five years old, we would not be explaining soaking. Try, as, just try. As sex positive as I am, I think that's. Uh, so it's another. It's another thing with, uh, with Mormons, with people who like are in the Church of Latter Day Saints, where. Sex only counts if there's movement or something. God is like a T-Rex in the first Jurassic Park and can only see you sitting if there's movement involved. So mm -hmm. they'll do like, they'll do P and V, but as long as he's not thrusting, did, did you fuck? So you, huh? so it's like on a swing? Like one, Sometimes there's, I've heard there's of it. moving apparatuses? No, usually they're just like laying in bed, I guess. And then there was a thing that came out more recently at uh, Brigham Young University, like the main Mormon university in Utah, mm -hmm. where I couldn't tell if it was like confirmed or not. But it's a bunch of like very religious kids in college where like a a person with a penis and a person with a vagina would be soaking. They would just be mm -hmm. laying like face to face. And then a friend would yeah. jump on the bed next to them to create some amount of motion. <laughs> Just like mm -hmm. the ultimate wingman, really. It's so it's pretty... like you're like double bouncing them on a bed. Yeah. hundred percent. So they can fuck. Yeah, because a loophole is as long as you're not doing the motion. Yeah. Because that's, that's what I was always wondering. <laughs> so it's, is like, like... it's like popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, like you try to hang on and the person's <laughs> trying to bounce you up? <laughs> like latched onto each other. Yeah. yeah. But like frozen. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you need to be holding on to each other because the whole point is not to move, right? So, would that count as a threesome? Because you have a third person involved with the sex. But if it counts as a threesome, that third person is moving, then it's not soaking anymore. What even is a sin? You know. I wonder what how many Mormon is... couples have been thwarted when they're like, "All right, we've convinced, we've gotten a third, we've gotten a unicorn to come bounce the bed for us," <laughs> but like, you know, maybe like they're yeah, they're parents bought them this you know mattress because they're rich mormons or whatever oh, and they got these Tempur -Pedic mattress. mattresses where you like you put the wine glass on it and you can't, uh. you can't fuck it up <laughs> foiled yeah that would be a really that good would way make to a market those commercial. two mormon that would parents sell you some, yeah it yeah. wouldn't sell it to mormon college kids but it would sell it probably to everyone else <laughs> would the commercial be two people it might sell it to like like Mormon college kids who want to have sleepovers and then also soak where it's like, look, your friends can be on the other side and trying desperately to have not sex and you can sleep like a baby. It'll be fine. Yeah. You won't even notice it. <laughs> not sex. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> eels could have an equivalent. That's right. Uh, more mans. A more a more man is like a, a combination between a Mormon and a merman. Awful. So it's like a Mormon, half Mormon, half fish. But Last it's half Mormon. Yeah, it's right, a side to side. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, isn't Utah like? I feel like there could be an eel equivalent to soaking, Utah's right? Kind of middle ish, yeah. Because you know how, like. I mean, they're know, always your... soaking, they're in the water. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah. soak wetter than and, usual, right? Oh, another point. Wet. Wetter than usual would be a really good tagline for something. I don't know what. Wetter than usual. That should just be your <laughs> podcast tagline. <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of we might as well plug that right now you oh, do yeah. a podcast oh I yeah we sometimes. never really introduced you yet did we <laughs> oh, this is the right way to do it i think i said a name somewhere yeah this is sarah I and sarah know. does a podcast i do called a podcast. it came from the sea yeah and it's wetter than usual it's wetter than usual <laughs> i don't know what to say about it yeah i whoop. Thank you. Um, See, that could be bonus content, right? It's a, kind of like a side cast, like it came in the sea, and that's the <laughs> that's the wetter than usual version. A branch that off. Would be yeah. really good, actually, yeah. <laughs> there was an episode where one of my co-hosts, he just really likes Moby Dick, and I don't. Sure. I hate it. I think it's just a very boring piece of literature. That's me, though. Um, and so he wanted to talk about it and he asked me to like look up stuff about whaling. So I like looked up some stuff about like sperm whales and whaling, but he mostly just wanted to talk about whale cum the whole time. Mm. So that well, he wanted you to feel welcome in 
the episode. <laughs> Wait, he was the, the podcast that I host. Wait. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I don't, have you ever had that experience? You feel like unwelcome in your own home, like some just <laughs> weird person is there. I literally shared a house with my ex-husband for several months. So yeah, yeah, that'll happen. Okay, can I? <laughs> can I yeah. finally? I, I, I'm really proud of this idea. What so, idea? You've got eels and they're they're prudish or they're shy or they're Mormon or whatever, right? Sure. So same you know same you've you've got the classic <laughs> glory hole, which is like in well, even that's what the sheet is, right? It's a hole in the sheet yeah. for your external genitalia to pass through, right? Into the internal genitalia, yeah. Right. But if you both have cloacas and you're trying um, to you're trying to also like trying to appease your fish eel mormon god you could kind of get a reverse glory hole which is sort of just like a little pipe that goes through the sheet and you both kind of place your cloacas on it and it's like kind of like a that's, double ender you can stimulate yeah, each other so through the sheet a dildo. but there's no cloaca to cloaca contact like and so it's not tube? a sin in the eyes it's of poseidon hollow? or whoever you is mean it for it to be hollow um well i feel like it's hollow if you're trying to do insemination is it still insemination is that the term yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's it's if you're just doing it for pleasure then it's just like a it's like a dowel right a dowel. A dowel. Or just a regular double ender or i don't know why dildo. it has to have such yeah. a like a plain shape you think a dowel is a double ended dildo sounds like when you get tampons that are in like a cardboard tube it's too dry it's too scratchy at least yeah, sand I, it down I totally yeah, relate <laughs> a bit of varnish, something to seal it up. I mean, it hopefully wouldn't be dry because you are underwater. Oh, right. That's true. I don't know if having it soggy would be better at that point. Yeah. Well, definitely not so if it's soft, cardboard. But also, would dowel soaked in salt water <laughs> using a double ended dildo? Ooh, yeah, the salt up in there. I don't know. Not my first choice, but I'm not an eel Mormon. Kelly's the author here, so it's up to you to write mm. this write this fan fiction. Oh yeah, that's what this is for. Is that what this is for? Oh, I don't know. Dis I don't remember. Well, does Spank McGlans mm. have a cloaca? I heard Spank McGlans. <laughs> I did too. What? No, <laughs> Smegma. Right, right. Smegma Spank is his cousin. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of cousins. It's, <laughs> uh, he, he's an Atlantean Mormon, so that's kind of they got big families down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of cousins, a lot of sisters. Sometimes there's overlap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sisters. Well, it, your, your dating pool in Atlantis is really small. You know, it's kind of like Iceland, except you can't even <laughs> leave necessarily because, I don't know, because I guess you reveal the secret Trade of embargoes, yeah. Well, I think in, I you know, maybe we'll have to get Josh to confirm this for us, but I believe his version of Atlantis that we're, this is the one we're talking about, I believe it's in a dome. It's got... Oh, I don't want to spoil anything. Because there was some early confusion as to whether or wet? not... Is it dry Atlantis or wet Atlantis? Well, this, this is exactly usual. where we were confused because we got about, like, I think three episodes in and we were trying to figure <laughs> out whether our characters, like, had gills or breathed or what. Right. And I believe what we landed on is it's a dome underwater. Okay. And it's... So that creates an air pocket but it okay. also has a bunch of water in it. So if you have gills, okay. you can be under the water. Yeah. I mean, that's like that's like Disney's Atlantis. That's a similar uh -huh. setup there. In The Little Mermaid? No, 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 no. In the movie, Atlantis. Oh, right. Yeah, yes. the, the Little Mermaid is just... There's not really a city, is there? There's just like the weird... Oh. There's the castle and stuff. Yeah. I thought that was Atlantis as well. Am I just that like was Atlantis. making that no, up? No, that was Atlantis. Oh, okay. the, yeah. He's Multiple Disney Atlantis. Gotcha. Oh, All canonically the same Disney somehow. Knowledge. Obviously. One is the fallen version later on. But I don't know. But this is what you could tell us because you are an oceanographer, right? Or I studied oceanography. Right. Yeah. So like Atlantis, where is it? It's in the Atlantic Ocean. In the middle of it, there is actually a place called Atlantis. But it's just a bunch of uh, the, the tubes. It's a bunch of tubes, a bunch of rock tubes. Vents. There we go. It's a bunch of hydrothermal. Oh, vents. is it? Like, it's like that Bioshock city that's all tubes. 
I wish. Like Atlantis is just like a weird failed libertarian project. Yeah, that's where we shipped Ayn Rand when she got boring. Um, <laughs> no, there is like I don't know, like one of the teachers that I had at uh, in my undergrad actually was on the team that discovered this like like previously unknown like massive set of hydrothermal vents and they named it atlantis because they're a bunch of nerds mm. i would have yeah. named it too bland oh that's good yeah. so yeah. is there a dome there or no yeah. just like tubes and weird looking shrimp okay Ooh. so we're off on the wrong foot for for scientific accuracy is what you're saying i think you might have some like some areas you could improve a little bit yeah Hmm. Okay. Uh, like maybe we should just get out ahead of it. Is there anything else important we need to know about Atlantis, so that maybe we can kind of try and retcon this story before we even start? Yeah. Unfortunately, their entire system of government is based on like a religious oligarchy. Hmm. Which religion? Is it more that underwater Mormonism? I'm going to say yes, just because I completely blanked it, could not think of a weirder religion to equate it to. Shen Yun, <laughs> no, it's all based off of Shen Yun, that, um, that Chinese cult that goes around and does massive dance recitals, but then also tries to recruit people to their cult through these like big, elaborate dance performances. Two for one. Oh. So like Falun Gong, but more fun? It's, so it's related to Falun Gong. Falun Gong does the Shen Yun... Um, Falun Gong is the cult. Shen Yun is the performance. Oh, okay. It's, so like it's the same how... thing. I'm learning yeah. new stuff here today, so this is all new to me. Yeah, and all of that, but underwater, there isn't a dome. There isn't a city. It's hydrothermal vents. Funky shrimp. Funky shrimp. Um, they do chemosynthesis, so there's no sunlight at all. We just have to sort of like lick minerals off the rocks. Okay. Are they easy so to look shrimps up, with tongues. Oh, yeah. We are going to have to have, like, some way of slurping minerals off of rocks. Ooh. Proboscis? Ooh, proboscis? Yeah. Ooh. Where do I get a proboscis? I, 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 that, this is another thing. This is kind a of straw. going off. A You're straw is a proboscis. In Canada, you have the real health care, so. <laughs> a straw is a probos proboscis. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but they're all paper now. They don't a work in the ocean. <laughs> the they're... entire population of Atlantis is collapsing because they can't use plastic straws anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe I'm sure there's that's plenty still in there. Maybe that's actually what happened to them because I feel like the, you know, some of the writings of what was it? Was it Plato? It was one of those guys. Was, like... I think it was Plato or Ptolemy. One of those yeah, writers. I feel like they were a bit fuzzy, so maybe that was sort of. Like, maybe when they switched to plastic straws, like, the ancient Greeks lost the ingredients for plastics, kind of like, you know, the Greek fire and oh. the Damascus, Damascus steel, the concrete. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it from the Atlanteans. And, like, we're clearly about to lose it again, because where everyone's on this about, you know, getting rid of plastic, and it's the end of Western civilization. They were right. Derek Fildebrandt was right. I should follow his Twitter. I'd be okay with that. Could we do a it hard being the pivot? end of Western civilization? Oh, I was like, fine. you'd be okay with Kelly following this guy's Twitter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that too. do you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we do a hard jarring tonal shift into a sincere question? Yeah. Ocean plastic, what's the deal? That wasn't worded okay. like a sincere question. <laughs> no, I will expound because there <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I, I did my homework. I did listen to oh. uh, a few extra episodes of It Came From The Sea, uh, name of the podcast we're plugging. And so there was one where you were saying something along the lines of like that o or like ocean plastic in general or microplastics or one of them was like not necessarily as threatening to oh, marine life yeah. or something. Um, so it's not hmm. plastic is complicated because plastic has like in addition to just becoming like a real fucking problem. Um, it's also really necessary for a lot of things, like for medicine uh, and science generally, like being able to have plastics you can pretty cheaply make and throw away is really important. Um, so I don't want to say that plastic isn't like plastic isn't evil, but plastic also isn't like completely benign. Um, but 
as long as the plastic isn't coated in certain types of chemicals that are going to make like they're just going to fuck with you because they're chemicals and they're small enough that an animal doesn't choke on them uh a lot of times microplastics in particular the really small plastics will just sort of like pass through a fish um it's just like filler right right it's just like if you know if you were to eat a penny you'd poop a penny out it wouldn't just get like it wouldn't kill you i mean maybe um, you would yes it wouldn't feel different. good <laughs> built different your anus is so tight that, that penny yeah would actually I, kill you. I pride myself on that like <laughs> i am at the club and i'm leaning into people and i'm like listen you put a penny in me it's not coming out and i wink <laughs> from the top not the bottom because you can't that's even right. get it in the bottom that's right yeah it must take uh, you a long time to poop but we can talk yeah. about that later no, no, no. It's still a good way of flirting because, like, I, what, what I'm saying is nothing's <laughs> just going to come out, but you can get it in with lubrication. You're just making sure they know that anal leakage, not a problem with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like that's, like, 90%. That's a concern. Well, it's a thing we're looking for, but it's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, I would say prudishness in the like the world of dating apps because i have not found a single app yet that like they'll you, you can pick your pronouns you can pick your religion you can pick your like whether or not you drink do drugs whatever but you cannot specify the like amount uh, or like your risk of anal leakage you can't like there's, I feel like there's that no might drop be kind down of discriminatory to towards people like people who have anal leakage you know they didn't choose that life didn't they I don't know. Like, how do we know? Well, you ask, I guess, but like, does that want to be your opening line for every single message you sent? Is uh, so? What's your deal with any leakage? Or, well, like, uh, we, full or natural, natural and I got no to, drips. Yeah, like, you can list your height on there. Like, you know, short people, right. tall people. They didn't choose that life either. But then there's like, you know, the box that you fill in yourself. You can put your funny little quips in, or you can put your wetter than usual, no any yeah. leakage. Right. Oh, or anal which leakage. is like that one two combo is a hard uh, like needle to thread. But if you can do it, like you're covering what all your bases. What is unusual? Not where you'd expect. <laughs> what is unusual in the back? <laughs> Wetter than usual in just the right places. <laughs> okay, but sweater than usual on command, right? Like just turn it on and off like a fountain. <laughs> Right, just like switch. menstruation. That's how that works, too. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> we were doing so good. We were on a sincere okay, question, okay. and okay. somehow... It's, just, it's a big question. <laughs> what else? So, yeah, sometimes, sometimes plastic... Sometimes when plastic is swallowed by a large enough creature and it's a small enough piece of plastic, it will just, like, completely pass through them, and it's not really a problem. But in a lot of other cases, right, like, there's other things that will happen where it won't get digested and it will sit in a stomach, um... So if uh, mostly, I think, I think it mostly comes up in birds or like marine creatures that are not fish for some reason because they have more complicated digestive tracts. Uh, plastic will get stuck in different areas where either physically it becomes a problem because they just think that they're full. So they starve to death because they have a stomach full of plastic. And that's kind of well known because there's pictures of like, oh, we pulled all this out of a seagull's, like, seagull's stomach. Um, you can find like pictures of like balls of plastic crap. Um, but the other thing that will happen is most of the plastic that we use is treated with something. So with clothing, it's a big one where infant clothing in particular in the US and a lot of other countries, it's legally required that it be flame retardant. And so they'll coat it. It's not, it's not a great word, but it just means like resistant to flame. Um, mm. So... It will be coated with chemicals to make it so that if, uh, you know, if there's an electrical spark near your baby's crib when they're asleep, instead of just like going up in a flash, it'll like smolder and kind of wear out. And like our clothing is mostly made out of plastic. So, right. So the crib is going to burn, but the baby inside the crib will be fine. At least the baby's onesie will be probably fine. Right. Um, and when you're looking at, plastic that we use on beaches or just outdoors a lot of it is treated to be resistant to uv breakdown because the sun will just make plastic really brittle and like fall apart and so when that when those chemicals get into the water if a fish eats a little bit of it or if you have like 
algae or plankton or like little little bits of barnacles or whatever like latches onto that plastic they'll actually leach those chemicals directly into their system um and so if you right if you have a creature that needs to photosynthesize and it just leached a chemical that makes it resistant to uv rays now that creature is like literally has a chemical in it that's like sunblock so it just can't get the same kind of nutrients that it needs the other thing these chemicals will do is they're called persistent organic pollutants so pops and the word organic there just means that they are shaped in such a way that they can take the place of like pre-existing molecules like way oversimplifying it but in the case of a fish that means that the material from that baby's onesie that made it resistant to flames might mimic some other kind of hormone that the fish would produce and so what we found is that as these chemicals leach off of the plastics into the water into the fish they're not producing the right kinds of hormones so sometimes they're like their entire life cycle is just messed up where they're just like not reaching adulthood in the same way or when they reach adulthood, they're like uh, hormones control sex organs. So like their sex organs are now not properly developed because this other like artificial hormone kind of got in the way. And so like there's still, right, there's still massive issues with plastic in the ocean. And it's just like the one that people think of, which is like, oh, a fish is going to choke on a piece of plastic. Um, is kind of like a really small part of it and not nearly as big of a problem as as kind of it, it's easy to portray it as because it is very visual yeah I, I guess i like as a lay person who reads a lot of i don't know Fish potentially erotica. alarmist what oh okay <laughs> who reads a lot of potentially <laughs> alarmist articles like i i guess i i had it in my head that basically the consensus on plastic was is just doing like 15 bad different things and yeah, I, like I, I wouldn't have necessarily pegged it to fish. Like I feel like that example of like the stomach full of it, like that happens with sea turtles or no? So sea turtles and yeah. whales are kind of the big ones that people will point to and be like, oh, this sperm whale like beached itself and had a stomach full of plastic. Or here's a picture of a sea turtle eating a plastic bag that looks like a jellyfish. Um, those happen. That definitely is a thing that we have found that image of the sea turtle with a straw in his nose right like that is a thing that occurred but that is incredibly uncommon um they just most of the plastic in the ocean isn't in the shape of an entire plastic bag it isn't right it isn't in a form where it's gonna look like a jellyfish and something's gonna eat it that's just visually if you like if you're trying to find shorthand to discuss with people like ooh, plastic's harmful that was a really easy visual shorthand. And then you do have these um, charismatic mega megafauna, uh, like these really cute looking animals that people like, where you can say like, oh, like we need to protect the sea turtles. I described earlier, right? Like, Char she's very charismatic, charismatic as hell, yeah. She would do great in a job interview. I fully believe that. Um, and it does, it oversimplifies the issue, which becomes a problem. Then people focus on kind of the wrong aspects of like, well, what do we do about it? And then it also makes it really easy to be alarmist and to just be like, oh, well, there's, you know, we're just killing everything. Everything's doomed already. When I don't think either of those are, like, helpful, to be honest. Is there anything that, because I know, I think you've touched on this as well uh, with the episode I was listening today. You mentioned it about carbon, where you kind of have to remember to preface your statement with, oh, you know, we should reduce our use of this, where we can do what we can as consumers, but there's so much more power in the hands of corporations, governments. So with that caveat still, um, is there something the average person can do to just like know whether their plastic is like more or less harmful, like in the ways that you mentioned, or is it just not even labeled? Um, it really like, no, essentially that's part of why, that's part of why stuff like the idea of a carbon footprint, which was actually like that whole concept of like your carbon footprint was made up by, I want to say it was Enron or Exxon. It was a big oil corporation. And it was like their push to make it so people thought it was more of an individualist issue rather than, right, like corporations and governments who really need to do something. And when it comes to like whether plastic is recycled or not recycled or just trying to track the sustainability of different plastics 
the messaging on it and the laws around how it's labeled are so haphazard and so easy to get around that right like you shouldn't you shouldn't be kind of going towards the like oh well this water bottle says it's made from recycled plastic so i'm only gonna buy that one because it's probably not to be honest um if a company is doing that especially like coca-cola i think has like several initiatives right now where they're saying like oh we're gonna make sure all of our coca-cola bottles like from all of our products are recycled or made with recycled plastic most of the times the, re the reasons they're doing that is because it's more profitable for them somehow so a lot of the plastic bottles that say they're made with recycled plastic, the reason that the companies are willing to do that is because they've found a way to make it profitable for them. Um, sometimes that means they've made it with less plastic, so it's lighter and it's cheaper for them to, to manufacture it. Sometimes they've managed to get plastic from someplace else that's like recycled, but also it's just maybe scraps from another plastic manufacturing plant. So instead of getting it you, know, you think you're getting like, oh, when I recycled a water bottle, now I'm buying a recycled water bottle. You think it's like a one for one, but that's almost never really the case. And it's like that's a certain not... per percentage, like a small percentage. I think it's just the word recycled means, mm. right? It doesn't have one specific meaning when we talk about manufacturing, but it does have one specific like cultural understanding of what a recycled item is. Mm. Um so it's that's not to say like nobody should try to do anything right like i do i have a, re a reusable water bottle i try to avoid plastic when i can but that doesn't mean like it doesn't make you better than anybody else if you can do that um because accessibility is a big issue and it's not that's not the thing that's going to like change the way the ocean is being polluted right now that isn't something that like my individual purchasing is really going to impact it's going to help me. It's going to make me feel a little bit better and a little bit more connected. Um, but people shouldn't be making these purchase changes, making these like lifestyle changes with the end goal of being just, oh, I'm bad. I'm not, I'm not part of the problem anymore. Um, and that's, that is, I think what I've seen from like when I used to have Instagram, you'd see like kind of lifestyle influencers talking about how, like how little plastic waste they use and that kind of being the, the end. It's kind of like that's the that's it they did it they did the thing instead of it being like well i'm going to reduce plastic because i care about that because i don't want to like be putting more plastic into the world but also i'm gonna try to make sure that i am aware when there are things on the books that i can vote for or that i can like educate other people about um that will actually help with plastic reduction like plastic waste and where would that kind of land if like i'm in the second category of those two people but i'm also extremely smug about it on top of that um that kind of... yeah i think that's a net negative overall unfortunately mm. yeah okay well this is the most called out i've ever been on uh <laughs> on our show but we'll have really? a soldier on <laughs> <laughs> well i mean to be fair we've you know we've only had so many guests you'll be topped i'm sure I only hope i'm the start of something big some new trend All right. Did we cover it? I don't. I don't know what else to say. All right. That was a well, lot of good I, stuff. I uh, it 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 sparked this thing in my head, and I was like, oh, this will be another forty minutes of discussion if I get into it, and it's kind of beyond the purview of the the ocean stuff, really. But when you're talking about plastic recycling, that the understanding I'm sort of coming to with a lot of it is that really just the idea of recycling plastic, if you're going to like if you're gonna oversimplify it is that like it's broadly a scam or greenwashing i guess is a better term because so much of it is, is problem, yeah because yeah. even like where you, the plastic where you can effectively recycle it like in the way that you think you're melting it down your um and you're you're making it to something new is but uh, i think pretty much every time it's like more energy intensive than to make new plastic which you're just kind of trading what one ecological thing for another. I guess there's like, I'm probably going to forget. I have like three points floating around in the ether and like, I'm going to lose at least one of them. Um, the easiest one is, uh, I guess we'll get the Josh first... to put them on the screen as you go. And then I don't, they're already drifting. It's, it's so oh, hard. Shit. To I, I, did, I made it worse. I'm sorry. I'm going to just, um, the first one that's like the easiest to, uh, the easiest to just sort of like hit is that like people talk about recycling, but they kind of forget that like, 
the three R's are like reduce, reuse, recycle. And so like recycling is actually like the last part of that. And like when that sort of system came into place, when environmentalists were talking about reduce, reuse, recycle in the, I think the 60s and 70s is when they started that. Um, they meant it to be in that order. Like that was a very specific thing. Like you reduce the amount of things that you use. So you use reusable stuff when you can. You try not to get to go if you can help it. Um, and uh, again, like that is all going to be completely based on it. It is very expensive to not get single use items. It, it is literally like not something many people can afford. Um, so if you can't afford it, it is not your fault. Essentially, like it is not your responsibility to try to you know, work a budget that is barely working for you and also feel bad about having to use single use items. That's that's just economics. It's shit and it's not your fault. Um, reuse is buying things, right, that you can reuse. So if you get like a tub of something, if I get like a tub of cottage cheese and the tub has an actual lid, I'll reuse that, right? Like it's not going to last as long as like if I bought something new, but it'll still be fine for a lot of things. So, like then you go to recycling. So like recycling really isn't supposed to be the first step on this where that was another thing that a lot of corporations did. Um, oh man, cottage cheese is good though. Um, uh, <laughs> corporations did work to kind of like make people forget about reduce and reuse because if you're reducing the amount of shit you buy and then reusing the shit that you do buy, right? Like that's not profitable. And so that's another thing where like it all sounds kind of like conspiracy until you find the memos from these corporations that are very much like, well, we need to like we need to find a way to like make this work for us. Um, so then when we talk about recycling and the energy that it takes, uh, it is in the U.S. and Canada in particular, it is very expensive to recycle. There are not enough recycling plants is a big part of it. And then um, I know it kind of in the U.S. at least it really depends on your county or your city. Like when I grew up, uh, we had bins, right? We had a plastic bin, we had a glass bin, we had an aluminum bin, we had a paper bin. Um, and depending on where I've lived, that's kind of the most separated that the U.S. gets. A lot of times I don't have recycling in Hawaii. Hawaii barely has any areas that actually offer recycling services. Um, other areas, if you have recycling at all, it's like one big blue, blue bin and that's it. Um, but if you go to countries... Um, like I lived in Japan and Korea for a while. They have not just like plastic glass paper, but the plastic is also separated into different types of plastic because that's a big deal. Um, you have to clean it. So there are countries where like you actually get fined by the like local like municipal government if you try to recycle plastic that is dirty. If you have like a yogurt cup, you have if you have a cottage cheese tub you haven't cleaned out, um, they'll fine you for it because those are the things sorting the different types of plastic and then cleaning them enough that they're actually able to recycle. That's where it's really expensive. Like that's where it takes the most energy and plastic isn't because plastic is so soft. You can't, you kind of just can't throw it all in like a really hot chemical bath and like clean it and it's good. Like things stick into it and then the chemical bath will start to break it down in ways that make it less able to be recycled fully whereas like with glass and aluminum you can just soak them in something really hot and like basically boil all of the food stuffs off of it and then recycle it it's not a problem so plastic recycling is expensive it is energy inefficient if we're doing it in that way if we're just throwing a bunch of dirty plastics into a container outside where it's going to get really nasty and then sending it off to a recycling factory that doesn't have the facilities able to clean it. That's actually part of why um, China stopped taking a lot of plastic from the U.S. West Coast. We've been we've been selling it to China to recycle. Part of it was there was too much, but a lot of it was that it would get to China. And I cannot imagine how fucking disgusting this like like old milk jugs and stuff would have been after sitting in like your recycling bin outside for two weeks and then in a dump somewhere for months and then on a cargo vessel for weeks and then they'd finally get to China and it would just be fetid uh, and they weren't able to recycle it. So that was right. Like kind of the thing we were told was that the plastic was too much for them to use, but it was actually too dirty. Yeah. Cause that's sort of what happened here was uh, like, at least in places I've lived, which is just like two cities in Alberta, but there was, in the last few years, basically this shift from like, we're doing all this sorting to you're only going to put it all in one bag and we'll right. sort it to we're not even pretending anymore. Just 
Yeah. Like we were not taking basically any plastic and it's just more of like an acknowledgement of reality, but it sucks. It's still, if you have access to a recycling bin, um, most areas that still do that, it is still good to do. It is still like, it is good to put your site, like to sort your recycling out when you can. Um, because at the least, then you have kind of your trash. Trash that isn't plastic is mostly compostable. So if you have a dump that is mostly filled with not plastic, it's still mostly going to be like food scraps and things that will break down over time, paper. Um, so you can put those in a landfill and it's not great, but at least at some point, you know, it will kind of like, it will break down in some way. It will compost at least to some degree. So if you have the plastic sorted out where you can just put the plastic in another facility, um, right, it's not great. There is some amount of like, well, maybe we'll be able to figure this out at some point. But at the very least, you know where all of the plastic is. It isn't mostly mixed into a bunch of stuff that could could be composted, that is actually totally fine to kind of throw outside. Um, what I'm saying is throw all of your trash that isn't plastic just outside, just on the ground. Just out the window, you know, old yeah. school. Uh, Preferably in a neighbor's so. yard. Yeah. Preferably your worst neighbor, right? Well, I mean, you, well, you're not going to do it Garbage to your nice fight. neighbors, so. Yeah. You're just, like, sharing garbage, yeah. I heard you like peach fits. Yeah. See, I, I knew that could take us another 40 minutes, because I now also have, like, five thoughts in the ether. But it has been an hour. And five.